Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Have you ever wondered which stand should I use if I wanted to counterattack? Let's say you need to step back, cover, protect yourself, and then how do I step forward again to counterattack? Which hand techniques should I use and how should I position my hands when doing so? Well, in this video, I'd like to share with you one of my all-time favorite strategies when stepping back and then counterattacking. I'm gonna show you how to position your hands how to do some drills, some footwork drills, because it's all got to do with our stances and footwork. So make sure you stick around to the end so I can show you all the different techniques and strategies that I use myself and with my students. So guys, let's get started. Okay guys, so number one, you have to always keep a safe distance. You build the habit when training. So every time you are interacting with your training partner, make sure you keep that safe distance. So that way you have a better chance at seeing what's coming at you and cover, defend, block, intercept according to those techniques. So when you're standing, you want to make sure that the weight is distributed evenly on both legs. The width of your stance is so important. You don't want to stand on a very narrow stance and much less on a very wide stance. It has to be roughly the distance between your Idi Kim Young Ma stance, okay? So you have one foot in front and you've got your hands up. Now, when you're in this position, if you need to step forward, you need to use the pushing stance, you know that you have to push from the back leg, okay? So that means if I'm stepping forward, I raise my front foot slightly, and then I push my stance forward. There's a big difference between you pushing your stance from the back leg, and then you just taking a step, right? So if I were to just take a step and drag the back leg, it would look something like this. and that's the incorrect way of moving forward, especially if you are trying to counter attack. If you are trying to move in to your opponent and use some sort of technique, and today we're gonna to be focusing mainly on hand techniques. So if I need to step in, once again, let's say I'm in my basic stance, basic position guard, I want to push from the back leg. So here I raise the front and I push, I push, and I push. If I'm going in the other direction, I push, push, okay? Now, I'm gonna share with you a couple different drills that I have my students work on here at the school, and so that way you can incorporate it to your own training. Now, I'm gonna use an agility ladder and a ring. If you have one of these, perfect. If not, get creative with your training. Okay, so I'm a big fan of using the agility ladder. So next I'm gonna show you the basic push stance drill I teach my class. So you can start on one end, and the idea is if you're moving towards your right, have the right foot lead, have the right foot in front when working on this drill. So you start with your hands up, and for every square you want to push your stance in and then out. You push your stance in and then out. Like so. Then when you move towards your left, of course, left lead. So here, push forward, land in front and then step out. So you push, push on every single one. Now, when you do this exercise, it's important you push off and then still drop the foot. You don't want to be kind of like, like this. When you do this exercise, a couple things. Number one, keep your hands up at all times. And number two, you want to look at the ladder with your peripheral vision. So you want to keep your eyes up in line with your target because then eventually you can work with this um, with a partner, holding a pad for you, and then you can step in and punch. Step in and punch. 
Now showing you how to step in and out with the punch. So once again, I'm going to my right, right leg in front, hands up. So the idea now is that every time I step in, I want to punch. Left lead. So next I'm going to show you a different strategy. I use this one with my students. I have them position a ring like this one on the floor and then when they step into the ring, the idea is to work on say the double punches but then bring that foot back, not with a bounce back, not with a push back, but with a step back. So that way I can alternate sides as I work on the drill. So let's say I'm on my guard with my right lead, I step in and I work on the double punches, but then I draw that right leg back, ready to step in with my left. So then here I step in and I work on my double punches. Next, I'm going to show you how you can work on these steps and hitting a target. I say it all the time, if you don't have one of these tie dummies, not to worry, you can use any punching bag, body shield or makiwara like a striking board. So when attacking, so Wing Chun theory talks about the center line theory. So you want to use the closest weapon, the closest tool you have to hit the target. So if I'm back here and I'm stepping back, I'm stepping in, you may want to use the leading hand first if the area is clear, so that way you can strike quicker. However, if you are stepping forward and the other person is attacking, then maybe you can use that arm to intercept and then strike with the rear hand. So you need to be comfortable with both options, both strategies. Okay, now when defending, See, other forms of martial arts will teach their students to just bring their hands up and stop punches coming to their face this way. Most people that teach this strategy usually use boxing gloves, okay? So then they can protect their face with the boxing gloves and then counterattack. And usually the person punching also is wearing boxing gloves. So you've got these big gloves both attacking and defending. So then, of course, that strategy under those circumstances works fine. But if you're in a real situation out on the street and you're wearing no gloves and the person attacking you, same deal, with no gloves, you do this, you have massive gaps between your hands, or around your hands for the other person to still land those punches. Okay, so your best option is to have a safe distance, to keep yourself away from reach and use your hand strategically and not fixed in one position, okay? So usually students or people with not much experience, they'll tend to panic and just shoot their arms out like this to try and stop those punches from reaching their face. Again, that's the worst thing you can do. So I wouldn't recommend this, but at the same time, I don't recommend that. So I use my footwork to keep myself safe. And then as I'm doing that, I use my Quan Sao, Quan Sao to cover. Okay, Gang Sao, Quan Sao, Pak and then I can find my opportunity to counterattack. Okay, so keep that in mind when practicing these type of drills. So if I'm moving in, I will usually move in first with the Chin Choi, with the arrow, in and out in and out, in and out. And of course I work both sides, in and out. You wanna do this hundreds, thousands of times, so that way your movements become reflexive and you build muscle memory. So of course, just to make this video not too long, I'm showing you just a few reps, but then yourself, you can do way more. Then once you've done your arrow punches, then I would recommend the double punches. And then, of course, the chase. Okay. 
Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And if you're new to the channel, you may wanna consider subscribing so that way you can keep up to date with all the weekly videos that I'm uploading in terms of demos, tutorials, how-tos. And also on a weekly basis, I'm uploading my Wing Chun by Design podcast. And if you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. I'll post the link in the description below. There we've got a free introductory applied Wing Chun course with lots of different videos that you can follow along and learn from. So guys, that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.